Hi there and welcome back. Let us look at this beautiful example over here. Whereby we are um, carbonalizing DME to form methyl acetate. This is how I would go about when it comes to the approach of forming methyl acetate from reacting carbon monoxide and DME. By the way, if you want full information on this particular example that we're looking into here, just go down to the description box below. Whereby it will take you to our website. You can download the files themselves, including the simulation, and you can run it on your laptop or any simulation of your choice. This includes the WSIM Coco look we've got you okay now that i've taken that out of the way let us look at this example as it is as a whole not focusing on the details of it it's just a summary of what is happening if you want to react come inside dme to form methyl acetate this is how i would go about it you can have an alternative one let me know if it also works okay so the first step would be to have a carbon monoxide stream and a dme stream with different compositions for example carbon monoxide can exist at 98 percent with a small fraction of hydrogen and for dme E, we can have it at 99%, almost 100% conversion, and a small fraction of methanol. The next step will be to compress our carbon monoxide. Why is that? So here, carbon monoxide is fed at ambient conditions, including a very low pressure. Um, not so low, but 5 atm. And if you want to increase the pressure, you can use what we call a compressor, which is a very interesting mechanism. It simply reduces the volume in order to increase the pressure. So why not use it, right? So yes, so I will feed my carbon monoxide and DME into mixer 1. After mixing together, we will have a small portion of methyl acetate starting or beginning to form and a small fraction of water that might be found also within that stream okay now we can react everything because the reaction is exothermic temperatures are highly highly expected to increase above 100 degrees celsius close to 255 for example after reacting there i use the gibbs reactor we can now go to the distillation column where we are going to be separating everything that we don't want from our methyl acetate at the bottom we can tell aspen we want to achieve 100 percent conversion of methyl acetate and the top stream can be the remainder of whatever molecules that were found or present at that stage so we'll find that at the top stream a small portion of carbon dioxide might exist at 28 percent and dme existing at 78 percent now we are engineers we do not waste anything we always recycle back to the system hence we took it back to the system we used a heat exchanger there because at high 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 temperatures you'll find that carbon monoxide and dme will flow super fast so in order to mitigate that let's include a heat exchanger and control some parameters so that we continuously maintain a constant flow throughout our simulation now in order to feed this back into our system let's use a mixer it only made sense to mix from the carbon monoxide stream if you want to try and mix from the dme stream and let me know how that goes so yes, after connecting the mixing stream, it will go back into the system and everything will be a continuous flow. There could be different scenarios. For example, you could have been given a problem that says design a plant that produces methyl acetate for 330 days and you want to achieve 600,000 metric tons. So hence, you'll convert everything and end up getting to 122. Yes. So if you're interested in more information, click on the link below and it will take you to our website. But for now, that was just a summary. Good luck. I hope this helps you somewhere, somewhere how you've got this let me know if you need anything else here we solve all kinds of simulations there's absolutely no simulation that's hard to solve as long as you understand the principles and the chemical formulas themselves till next time bye